I'll be covering my own personal experience at Trinity and we'll also be answering some questions that you guys have asked in the YouTube comments and in, in my Instagram DMs over the past few months. If you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. My name is Jane and I have just finished my second or senior freshman year at Trinity. I am studying English literature. I'm also in the WA program between Trinity and Columbia University which means I spent two years at each university. If you would like to learn more about the Julia program, I uploaded a video two years ago when I first got accepted, but I will be making more content about it. And also I am from Ireland, so I cannot speak on behalf of international students. And again, in another few weeks time, I will also be making a video about the international experience at Trinity. I'll be talking to some of my friends from different countries. I'm very excited about that, so stay tuned. In the description below, there will be time markings. So if you are interested in a certain aspect of Trinity and you just want to skip to that part go to the description it'll all be there let's go so some people in youtube comments or instagram dms have asked me what it's like in general to be a trinity student and what the atmosphere is like i oh, know i really like it i love the people there i think that it is a very diverse community this was filmed before the rise of the black lives matter movement so take some time to read trinity's response to it and their promise to bring about further change in the college community it is the 17th most international University. I think something like 122 nationalities represented in Trinity. Well, I know my cohort in English and also in the dual BA, but like in my course specifically, there are so many different nationalities. I expected to go into my course and meeting everyone from Leinster and just being like, oh, you went to that school? So yeah, I know that person, this person, but like, no. I feel like Trinity students are ambitious, but they're also down to earth. To continue on the atmosphere question or topic, I gotta bring this up, okay? <laughs> like, I am sure if people are interested in going to Trinity that they at least heard of, seen or read normal people. Sally Rooney was actually a English graduate. She did my course at Trinity, which is very cool. The director, Lenny Abrahamson, also went to Trinity as well. As a Trinity student myself, I thought that both the book and the, the TV series, even more so the TV series, because I feel like the visuals really helps. It really captures the atmosphere of Trinity. Yes, not everything is extremely accurate. First of all, most first year students don't have accommodation on campus. That's usually reserved for fourth year students. Secondly, tutorials are not in those kind of rooms. That was a really nice room. I don't know where they, they filmed that, but tutorials, if you're an art student, are more than likely going to be in the arts block, which is beside the famous beautiful front campus which like the majority of normal people are shot at. The beautiful front campus is great but it's not like where you'll find yourself most of the time. If you're an art student you'll spend most of your time at the arts block which is right beside front square. Sometimes I had lectures in different places like in the Hamilton. One time I had a lecture at the nursing and midwifery building. Not sure why. I quite like the arts block. I think it's really nice to study in there as well. It also is connected to all the, the three different libraries which are the Berkeley, the Usher and the Lecky. I myself love the Usher which is where Marianne studies in the show. Um, you see um, Connell study in the Berkeley and Marianne study in the Usher. Here are some clips of other parts of Trinity where you could have classes like the Hamilton and the Chemistry Building. There are lots of other science buildings. There's also the Nursing and Midwifery Building on Delir Street that I mentioned already. There's the beautiful Museum Building and Ghostmouth Hall off campus. Other places not shown here are the Business School and where medical students go like Trinity Biomedical Science Institute and St. James's Hospital and many more. Hopefully in another few months when Trinity opens its doors again I can go and film a little tour because I feel that would be quite useful for people since it might be well till open days happen again. Now I'm going to talk about some of the academic side of Trinity and of course I cannot speak for every degree because every degree is extremely different. So I'm going to give what my experience was and I hope that some things can overlap when it comes to other arts courses. So I study English. Because I'm a dual BA student I've had the pleasure of taking some other subjects because in Columbia there's the, the core and you have to fulfill some requirements like doing a language, doing a science. Because I only have two years at each university I've had the chance to do some of those things at Trinity to fulfill core requirements for Columbia so meaning I in my second year I took two electives and French as a language. And now here are some clips of some books I studied over the past two years. The English department at Trinity is the ninth best in Europe and the 28th best in the world according to the QS world rankings. English has always been one of my favourite subjects and I knew I wanted to study English at Trinity from attending their open days and from hearing about others in my secondary school during the course. Trinity has some pretty cool alumni as well like Oscar Wilde, Samuel Beckett who I've studied but also more recent writers like Anne Enright, Nisha Dolan and of course our favourite Sally Rooney. I've been asked a few times about modules and about like if there's much choice when it comes to modules and in your first year you have no choice you just um, if you're doing single honours English you can do English with another subject as well 
that's called joint honours. Single honours English, you do six subjects per term. Some of those include Irish writing, Old English, which looks like this. It's not Shakespeare, it literally is another language. And in second year, I studied modules like modernism, post-colonial theory and literature, and non-realist writing. And as time goes on in your degree, you get more choice in what modules you do, especially third and fourth year, when you essentially decide all of your classes. Two girls I know, Hannah from the Jewel BA and Grace from Irish College, asked me, was the English course what I expected it to be? And I don't know. I kind of forget what I expected. Um, I'm just so used to it, if you know what I mean. I think yes and no. Yes, in the sense of that I would enjoy it and the lectures would be interesting and classes would be engaging. In another sense, no, it's not what I expected. I didn't expect to love some things as much as I do now, which is the gothic. I never knew I would like that kind of thing. I didn't expect the course to be as demanding as it is. Some people are not sure where to access reading lists for English and I'm gonna link that below because honestly it's a great idea and like to find out what kind of stuff you read in the English course. There's loads of resources there. I'm sure there are syllabi or reading lists available of your chosen subject if you look up their department in Trinity. I did French this year at the university to fulfill the language requirement at Columbia and I really liked doing French. It's nice to go back to something I really liked in secondary school. I also did two electives to fulfill core requirements at Columbia. I did Art of the Mega City this term to fulfill the global core requirement and I did Cultures and Societies of the Middle East and North Africa to do the social science requirement to fulfill that. Cultures and Societies of the Middle East and North Africa was essentially focused on examining Western perspectives of the region. I did a group presentation on the impact of social media on the Arab Spring and a reflective essay on the course. I was hoping to do a science elective the next term, but I didn't get it because you register for electives and you may not get your first choice. You don't have to do electives, they're optional, but they're available to most students if you do want to branch out from your own degree. I did Art of the Megacity and oh my god, I loved it so much. It was so good, the lectures were brilliant. Because it was this term, most of the group work and assignment work was in the second half of term and that's when we all were sent home. I worked with three girls who I never properly met in lectures. We did a project on Harajuku fashion, which I loved. It was so much fun. And we also had to do a reflective essay. But others have also asked about lectures and tutorials, like what's the difference? Are they compulsory? Again, every course is different. The lectures are not compulsory. For some degrees, you might have to sign in when you go to a lecture, but not for English. You don't have to go. I like to go to all of the lectures if I can, because I think they're great anyway. So that's lectures, but tutorials, which are smaller classes with about 10 people or so, are compulsory. Depending on your degree, for my degree anyway, you are deducted marks if you miss a certain amount of tutorials. Again, it really depends on what you study. Needless to say, for the upcoming academic year, there's a change from the usual structure. In case you didn't already know, lectures will be online while smaller tutorials, seminars and labs will be in person for the first term at least. Hopefully by the second, things will have improved in relation to the pandemic. I thought I mentioned what it was like going from in-person lectures and tutorials to online because we all had to go home for lockdown and everything. So it was fine. In my courses in, in English, for those classes we did Blackboard discussion groups. One TA asked me to write a practice essay, which was really helpful. My assignments went smoothly. The modules that were meant to be exams were changed to open book take home exams, which were difficult because as I showed you in my last vlog there, um, it was a lot of work to do for four days, but I managed it just about. And the other assignments were fine because wrote them at home and everything. Obviously it would have been great to have access to the library. But yeah, that's how they were. Art of the Mega City went pretty smoothly as well. The lecturer was very tech savvy and was able to provide many resources to us. Well, my English lectures were uploaded as PowerPoint. My elective professor actually recorded some lectures and did some lectures in person via Blackboard Collab. My group met over Zoom. We did everything over Zoom. For French, my oral was cancelled. More marks went towards the essays that we were doing. We didn't have an exam either, so it was all just essays for the last half term. So that was interesting. Tutorials for French were held on Microsoft Teams. Trinity's grading system is pretty much the same as most European universities and UK universities and everything. I'll leave it here. It's very different to the American grading system, so I thought I should mention this. The best grade you can get is a first, which is between 70 to 100 percent. And if you're if you're when you're in secondary school or high school, or whatever, if you were getting like 80s and 90s on the regular, this may sound easy, but it's not. It's a very different system. In English, if you get 80 percent, apparently it's your work is publishable. I don't know, you know, it's just a very different system, so just keep that in mind. Another girl who commented on one of my YouTube videos, her name's Carly, she was asked, I think I answered her directly, but she asked about the academic structure of Trinity, and we call the first term Michaelmas, and the second term Hillary. And then there's the Trinity term, but that usually is when exams are over and research begins at Trinity. If you're an undergrad, you probably won't be doing research, unless you apply for a research grant. And we have five weeks holidays in between for Christmas, which is lovely. <laughs> Kylie also asked, again, I answered her directly, but she also asked, what is a 
reading week. So technically it's a week where you have no classes, no lectures or anything. The purpose of the week is so you can catch up on work. I do believe that it is a great opportunity to do that. A lot of friends of mine and me included, including have taken the opportunity to travel in that time. Of course as of right now it is very difficult to travel so hopefully within the next academic year and in the coming months non-essential travel will become easier. If you have a few days in which you don't travel, I definitely recommend catching up on work because it's such a valuable opportunity to catch up and to read on anything you need to read for the upcoming few weeks. It's in the middle, sorry, it's in the middle of term. Reading week is bang in the middle of the 12 weeks. And to complete Kylie's question, assignment week was usually, for me anyway, was before reading week and before exams began. So that was the time when I had a lot of essays due. V Helen. I'm not sure how to say their name, but they made a YouTube comment and I already answered their question earlier about the atmosphere of Trinity, but they also asked about like the workload and stre Trinity is stressful. Honestly, it's a very subjective thing. It depends on your degree, but I'm pretty sure most degrees have the same workload, even if they, it may not look like that. Some degrees, there's more contact hours than others, but then the ones with less contact hours have more independent study. It also depends on your own outlook and how you work yourself. For me, I still to this day, I'm working on balancing college and social life and um, everything in between. I talk so much that I had to recharge my camera there but I'm now going to talk about the social life of a Trinity student. A lot of Instagram DMs and YouTube comments I've gotten are about making friends and meeting new people at university. For me making friends was quite gradual. Over time I built some friendships in my first term at university especially through my course. So I'm quite lucky that my course is quite small. In single honours English is only about roughly about 50 to 60 students when we include um, joint honours who are students that do both English and another subject like 100 or so students. In some courses there are huge huge lectures of like 200 people and classes are big so it does depend on your degree but for me my degree was small I was able to meet people through lectures and classes like I remember I met Gelsie and Gabby through my old English tutorials after class I went and got lunch with them. I also met some people through my student to student group. Student to student are a mentoring program. Students in year years above help you to settle into college life. I became a student student mentor. Most of my friends are from my course but there are many other ways to make friends. Sometimes you can make friends from your own accommodation but there's also a really great way to meet people is through societies. There are a ton of clubs and societies in Trinity for sports, for any hobby you have, there, it's probably there and you can also start societies which is pretty cool. My favourite society, um, if I'm allowed to have favourites, everyone knows I love Do You Players, which is the Drama Society of Trinity. It's fantastic. They put on shows every single week and they're all student run shows. I also got involved in other societies like DU Film. I did their film relay last year, which was so fun. I edited a short film. I helped the Trinity Fashion Society's fashion show, which was great fun and met those people there too. I also became a staff writer for Trinity News this year, I've written a few articles, and I definitely recommend checking out Trinity student publications to get more of an insight into Trinity's student life. But I'll leave a link below of all of the societies that are in Trinity. I think that it is a huge part of Trinity life is to get involved in societies. It's not the be all and end all. There are loads of other ways to have a social life opportunity. One thing I do say is that if you're not necessarily into like nightlife and drinking, I think that societies is a really fun way to be social and meet people because not every event societies do are drink oriented. But if you are into a bit of nightlife and a bit of clubbing and things, uh, Dublin is a great city for that. There are loads of cool clubs. Societies hold loads of nights out. Trinity has its own pub called The Pav, which is on the cricket pitch and it's lovely on a sunny day to sit at the pub and just bathe in the sun which is not very common in Ireland but the biggest night out of the year <laughs> is Trinity Ball. <laughs> the last year I did a get ready with me for Trinity Ball. Of course it didn't happen this year because it would have happened in April but of course we were in lockdown and everything. I really enjoyed it when I went last year. I've only ever experienced it once so who knows if this year would have been good or bad. I don't know. Trinity Ball is Europe's largest private party so that's kind of cool to say that uh, your university hosts that. Even if you don't go, at least you can say that. So yeah, like another thing that was asked about was how to get around in first year. The best advice I can give you is make an effort to meet people and find new friends. Even if you already know people at the university, try and reach out and broaden your circle. Eventually you'll find your tribe, you'll find your rhythm. I feel like most of the time when people start university, they feel a bit clueless at the beginning, but like over time, like me, um, I felt like I found my feet just by going to the flow and 
meeting people on a whim, getting used to the um, academic work, getting stuck in, joining societies. Don't feel like you have to join all the societies, just try and pick the ones that you know that you'll get involved with. Like I spent most of my time with the players. So of course, you'll probably will sign up to many too many societies at the beginning, but over time you'll realize which ones you like. And also, again, you don't have to be involved in them. Girl in my Instagram DMs asked, do many people have part-time jobs? And I don't in particular. In first year, second year, I didn't work, but I did work last summer during the internship for three months. So I earned some money there but I didn't work during the year. A lot of my friends also didn't have part-time jobs, but some of them did. They, they all balance their time, like it's definitely doable. I'd say I'd recommend trying to find a job that is flexible. Another thing that Fee Helen, again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing their name right, they asked about how was my life outside of the uh, university. It's great for me. I joined Pembroke Wanderers Hockey Club. I love it. It's really nice to have something that is not necessarily associated with college. It's been another way for me to like meet more people, uh, make new friends and everything. And I love the club, I think it's a great club. I feel like you don't have to do loads of things outside of university life. I think especially if you're coming from somewhere else in Ireland or if you're an international student, I think that Trinity has so much to offer. I think that's everything. I hope I've covered most of what people have asked in the past. As I mentioned at the end of the video, I will be making another video in the near future about the international experience at Trinity. I will be talking to a few friends of mine about accommodation, the cultural transition, all those kind of things. And also I'll be making a Jewel BA video in the near future. So if any of your questions on the, in those kind of domains haven't been answered, don't worry, just stay tuned to the channel and those videos will be coming out in the next few weeks or months. I hope this video nonetheless has shed some light on what it's like to be a Trinity student. I hope you found it helpful and if you would like to see more videos on Trinity then make sure you like this video and subscribe, comment below any requests and more questions, anything like that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll